Tonight on The Renault Show, the Ferris Building team get to work constructing my new studio. Then I show how you can make some easy to hang laundry baskets. We go over my top tips for laying wallpaper and then we're joined by Chloe to show us how to revive a feature plan. Got it. And I haven't told you yet, but this isn't going to be a bedroom. This is going to be a design studio. A design studio. Okay. For me. Noted. 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 Cool. I'm so excited to get started on this room, but as always, we must begin with a site cleanup to ensure a safe work environment for Team Ferris to come and tear up this floor. The floor is up. What is news in here? Is there anything different to the last two rooms where it was all crap? Good news is your wall didn't fall down, but it's being supported by an old tree. What about everything else? Everything else is gone. So it's the same as every other room? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, we're, we're faring better than the other rooms. I think that's a winner, Ferris. Right out. Now it's time for Regan to frame up the walls so the guys from Hunter Lining Projects can bring in the super check. This room is feeling so much better already. Now it's time to install my long awaited inbuilt cabinetry. And I've tasked Zach with the installation of these stunning cabinets, which would you believe are from a budget furniture store? Cabinets are in. The gorgeous trims from Intrim have been installed. Now let's step back a few months to when we had a visit from David and Chook from Cotton's Glass and we discovered the old newspaper filling openings. Things sure have changed. Out with the old and in with the new. It's back over to Hunter Lining Projects to install this stunning real plaster cornice, which I have followed through all of the rooms so far for a seamless, elegant continuity. In comes Dan from Newey Paint Crew to come back in and get this room painted. He makes it look so easy, doesn't he?
And down goes the same floor I've used in the rest of the spaces so far. It gives such a beautiful, durable, consistent flow. With that being said, it's time to get wallpapering. Next, the much talked about design desk. With the desk built, it's back over to me to install the feature wallpaper into the newly built custom cabinetry. things that really finishes off a space is layering it up well and this space really deserves some amazing curtains so on this one I've teamed up with Draperly and I'm installing some of the most beautiful Belgian flax linen curtains I've saved installing the door in this room until the last minute. And the reason being we have so many people coming and going and so much going on in this one room with a very narrow door. The space is complete. Come on in and check it out. for a custom built design space or studio for quite some time now but it is outrageously humbling to finally see it all come together and to be all mine by far my favorite parts of this space oh as I say it I think of more I was about to say the cabinetry and the desk and then I remembered the divine lighting above the cabinetry. So I'll change it, three things. The cabinetry, the desk, and the beautiful library lighting above the cabinetry are by far my favorite things. The most challenging part, without doubt, was the fact that I didn't quite have enough space to fit in the four cabinets that I wanted and that I ordered before I checked with my builder. But the good news is, like any good team, we all made it come together and it just took a little bit of creative thinking. The one thing I wished I could have changed would have been the size of the window. The window that Alspec have put in here is beautiful. It gives such a gorgeous nod to the beautiful heritage of this house being a really wide profile double hung window. And I just wish I could have made it massive, you know, as huge as the doors in the living room. But the reason I didn't had nothing to do with the window, it was to do with the fact that the brickwork and construction work on the outside of the property, if I was going to do that, would have completely blown my budget. Well, it is on to the next space. And I have certainly left probably, maybe arguably, but probably my biggest task to the end. And that's the front facade of the property. I mean, we have asbestos, we have leaking, falling roofs, we have no gutter, we have falling balustrades. It's next. So enjoy this space and wish me luck. Clothes are off 
and I am absolutely ready to get stuck into some of the finer details for the laundry. Now I wanted to make this laundry a bit more bespoke, a bit full of character. And one way to do that is to not leave any detail unturned. So it's nearly finished and I could certainly just throw in some plastic washing baskets. But instead I've got myself some gorgeous navy striped um, linen. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make three custom laundry baskets out of it. One for the darts, one for the lights and one for the delicates. So this fabric is 115 centimeters wide and oh actually 1.2 wide and I got three meters of it. Now from that top rail of the battening to the floor it is around a meter. I don't want these hanging on the floor so I'm going to aim for these to be around 900 mil or 90 centimeters in length. They are going to look like little sacks and the reason that I'm doing this is I want to be able to change up some elements in my laundry as I choose. So you know, next year if I want these to be apricot, they can. If I want them to be white, if I want them to be linen, if they get grubby, I can throw them in the washing machine or replace them. A really tiny investment for a really big bank buck. So all I'm gonna do, I'm going to cut this into three separate sacks, just like making a Santa Claus sack, pop some little gold eyelets on them, and then secure them to hooks on the wall. As simple as that. And if you're not a sewer, never fear. You do need a sewing machine, but you don't need a lot of sewing prowess. Now the first thing I'm going to do is give it a nice broad hem across the top. It's going to give us something nice and solid to fix the eyelets into and also be a nice feature. I find it much easier to iron down my hems before I even get across to the sewing machine um, because it makes it that much simpler and that much neater during the sewing process. So you're probably all going, oh my God, you're not measuring this, you're not this, oh my gosh, that's so, you know, rough and ready. You know what, these are laundry baskets. We're not baking a sponge cake and everything is going to be okay. And this is also something that is really accessible to anyone. You do not have to be a seamstress to pull this off. And then we simply press repeat for number two and number three. Now that these are ironed and ready to go, I'm going to run a simple straight stitch all the way across the top of there. Now revealing a little bit too much about myself, I'd love you to meet Eleanor, my Elna, that I saved up to buy when I was about 13. So yes, I have been a crafting dork for a very long time. My poor machine is so old that in fact, I've lost the bowl. across the top I'm going to do a simple stitch down the side and across the bottom and the first bag will be nearly done. When you're wanting to um, sew together something like this always make sure that if you're doing a simple line that your good sides of the fabric are together. I tried so hard to use these eyelets, but for the life of me, I couldn't make these ones work. So instead, just like any good renovating project, I'm gonna have to find an alternative. So what I've done is I've created tags out of the striped um, fabric, and I'm attaching them across the top hem. So exactly where I was going to be putting the eyelets. So this adds the flexibility of me being able to remove the baskets anytime I wanted to either wash them or upend them on the floor, ready to get those clothes in the machine. Rapid Renomate is the perfect renovator's companion for fast tracking all your home projects. Helping you renovate with ease and enjoyment. It's the new, smarter way to renovate. You'll be able to collate all your reno data, select all your products in one place, Find your nearest suppliers. Build and track your budget. Get access to exclusive member offers. And manage your worksite and trades 24 seven, all from your mobile phone. It's never been easier to start your personal or professional renovation. Rapid Renomate is free to download from the App Store and Google Play now. There are so many wallpapers on the market, and I don't just mean whether they're patterned, whether they're striped, whether they're shiny. 
I mean, there's so many different types of wallpapers in how they come to you and how they need to be adhered to the wall. So the three main ones that I've come across are the self-adhesive. That's right. Just like when you're covering your school books or your children's school books for school, where you peel off the back and stick it on. That is number one. Number two is where the wallpaper comes to you as literally a paper. And this then either needs glue adhered to the back before it goes on the wall or directly to the wall and then the wallpaper up. You will get clear instructions with every roll of wallpaper that you buy. And the third type is this type where it actually comes pre-pasted. I know, so the glue is actually impregnated into the back of the paper and you simply activate it with water. For me, to be honest, this is one of my favorites because there's a lot less mess when you don't have a big pot of glue. But the one thing that never changes with all of these wallpapers is the importance of measuring. Wallpaper is an investment. A decent wallpaper is an investment and it's also an investment in your time or your money to get someone to lay it on the walls. So I always recommend, it is such a trainy thing to say, but I always recommend measure twice, measure three times and cut once. And if you're unsure whether you've got it sorted, always make sure that you do two pieces, stand back, reassess, before you go and cut an entire wall's worth. And this is the point where you also need to be reading the instructions about the pattern repeat that comes with the wallpaper. Sadly, not all our walls are plain sailing and there are always obstacles in the way just like this GPO. Now you can actually wait until your paper's on the wall and cut around it, but I find it so much easier to cut my wallpaper when it does not have the glue on it or it's not wet. So I do like to measure where the obstacles are in regard to the paper, mark it out and make a few small incisions before it gets gluey, messy and wet. All right, so I have the first run of wallpaper up, which is realistically the easiest when you're doing a pattern repeat. Now, I did some research and this wallpaper has a 64 centimeter pattern repeat, which is like it's nearly two feet. That makes me really old, hey. So, the reason that this is so is the pattern is really quite large, which means the pattern repeat is going to be greater. If you have a smaller repeat in your pattern, then you have a smaller pattern repeat distance. Now, for those of you who are wondering what it is I'm talking about, what that means is from where you cut your paper, you need to allow at least the pattern repeat plus the length you need on your subsequent rolls. So that where the pattern touches the edge of the paper like this, you'll have the right, I guess, level of paper to match up with it. So I always get super nervous on my second roll of wallpaper because I am not a wallpapering professional. I always get super nervous as to how well I'm gonna be able to match the pattern. You can naturally go for a non-match. So this paper comes with instructions that if you want, you can literally roll it this way for one and then upside down for the other. So it would be actually a mismatched pattern. So when you're wallpapering like this, um, often they come with a squidgy. I use a credit card or a driver's license. I attach the top edge and you can see I haven't pulled the whole backing off it yet because that would be dangerous. Just like when you got into a mess covering your kids' school books. So I like to have one hand underneath and I slowly pull the backing down. It's a bit of a fiddle, but I slowly pull the backing down as I go down with the credit card. Just nice and slowly. That's good. This 
I must admit, is one of the messiest ones to apply for me. And that could just be because I am a bit of a grub. So when you're using a wallpaper that you apply the glue to the back of the wallpaper, you will often find that it has a period of time that comes on the instructions where the wallpaper needs to book, I think they call it. And generally I've found they're between three and 10 minutes that you leave the paste on the back of the wallpaper with the wallpaper folded in upon itself. This allows the glue to penetrate into the paper and it stops having any shrinking or expanding problems once you get it on the wall. So paste away. I do find that my table gets quite gluey because I'm pasting all the way to the ends of the paper, which can get a little bit annoying because when you lay your next piece on, you always end up with glue on the front of your paper. So the secret is have a clean bucket of water and some sponges and always clean down your table in between pieces. Once your paper is booked and ready to go, you unroll it and get it on the wall. I do like to make sure my hands are clean whenever I'm handling my wallpaper and always make sure that I have as little glue as possible. You never ever want your glue to dry on the front of your paper. So I use a large sponge that is not wet, but it definitely is damp and wipe down the front of the wallpaper. This helps get rid of any bubbles. It helps smooth it on It makes sure it's clean. And it also makes sure that no glue dries on the front of that paper. Then it is as simple as press repeat. One of the best things I can recommend when you're wallpapering, no matter what type of wallpaper it is, is make sure you have a very sharp blade. The second wallpaper that I'm popping up is very different to the first. The first thing is it's wider, so we don't have to worry so much that we're gonna miss the gaps with the battening. And it's also not already self-adhesive. So we actually need to use good old fashioned glue for this wallpaper. Now, I don't mind using glue with the wallpaper. I don't mind the non-self-adhesive. I actually find them easier to lay. But one thing I do enjoy is I like using a pre-mixed glue. Look, it's quite thick. It doesn't tip out and I find that this is much quicker and much easier than the glue for wallpaper that you can mix up. So you can get one that comes as a powder and you mix it up with water to make your own paste. But I love this because I know the proportions are perfect, the consistency is perfect, so it's going to be perfect. When you're popping this on, it can get quite thick because it literally is like glue funnily enough so make sure that it isn't you know a centimeter thick and I generally cross hatch it to make sure I've got plenty of area you don't need to like now run for the wallpaper you've got a little bit of time before that sets I read the instructions, it said measure and cut, so I've measured, I've drawn my line, yep. I measured down both sides of the paper so I knew it was square at the end. Yep. Although, because we're going to cut on wall, it's not as important. Mm -hmm. And then it said, spray, wait till you see this, we've got matching spray guns! Yes. It then said spray an even coat, fold it onto itself and mm -hmm. allow, apparently, the professional term is booking. Mm -hmm. Allow it to moisten the glue and expand and relax the paper. Yep. Sounds right to me. Oh. Okay, good. I'm glad you know what you're doing. So, first thing we're going to do is I have a line down here somewhere. Yep. Cardboard's helpful. Oh my gosh, it's so helpful. I was telling Dan previously, guys, that I'm usually a very hobby wallpaperer because it's certainly not my craft, and I always cut the wallpaper on the plastic um, table, which means that I blunt my knife every stroke. Okay. All right. I'm sure we're not. We've got the mist on, yeah. Okay. So apparently we just missed it up. Yeah, I'd say not too wet. Just want to get a nice little... What happens 
you reckon if we go too wet? Probably gizzle. Mushy? Yeah, mushy and be harder to work with, I reckon. Okay. We can always apply more where we can't apply less. Oh my god, you're such a common sense. <laughs> so it says fold it onto itself. Both sides, you reckon? Yeah, apparently. Yep. And we wait three minutes. So the water doesn't dry out. Ready? So apparently we just... Wait. Apparently we wait. Yep. Close enough. If I had my spirit level. <laughs> there you go, Siri, we're good to go. Okay. Okay, let me get that done for you. Okay, tall person. Okay, so match the right up with the line on your right hand. Yep. Go further to your left. How good is it having a tall person? There you have it, all the different types of wallpapers and my top tips for laying each of them. Today I am here with Chloe from the Greenery Sydney with a sad and sorry display of what used to be a beautiful feature pot. Chloe, these guys have seen better days. <laughs> they may have, Naomi. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Okay, so <laughs> this literally is like hundreds of dollars worth of Sansevieria, mother-in-law's tongue, right? Yes. And and I don't know the reason they're like this. It could be lack of water, it could be overcrowding. But what I do know is I need your help in getting these revived because I'm, I'm all for restore, not replace, yeah. and I'm sure these have a little bit of life left in them. So what are the options? What can we do here? Okay, you definitely do have a lot of options. These can be pulled out and separated. You could take the whole pot. Like the whole pot out. You could do that. Yep. But this is a really large pot. You could either separate them by getting your secateurs and separating the plants and Inside pulling them the out. Inside the pot? Yep. yep. Or you can snip some of them off. So. There's another yeah. dead one. Oops. Some of these ones are not looking so great, so you just want to snip them down there. Will that grow? That one won't grow, okay. but you will. You're still keeping the plant and you're going to get offshoots coming up from the middle. Okay. So literally I'm getting rid of the parts that have no hope yep. to allow the rest of the plant to have a shot. That's right. So okay. it's putting too much energy into these ones then they're not going to grow. They're not going to do too well. And, and are we going to be able to revive these in any way? Definitely. So if you snip these? them. These? Yep. Wow. <laughs> okay. What am I going to do? So you can snip them off and you can pop them in water. You can cut them down. Okay. And they will grow roots and say maybe give it two to three months. In the water? In the water. And then you'll be able to repot them back in here. So I can recycle. So I'm not only just rejuvenating. And look at that one. That one's actually beautiful. Yeah, that one's doing fine. That one's doing fine. So now we've given this one a better chance of life. That's right. And now I know you have a plan for the front of the pot too. So I'm going to leave you with this rejuvenation and come back later and see what you've gotten up to. That sounds good. Okay.
Oh my gosh, Chloe! What what have you done? It's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> it obviously needed a little bit of a haircut. It did, it did. Quite a lot of it had to come out, but you've still got heaps left. Okay, so you've popped, you've obviously filled in the bald spot. I did. What's this? So this is a sedum. Okay, help me out there. Help <laughs> it's me another out. succulent. I, oh my gosh, so we're companion planting. Yeah, so this also will do really well in full sun. So they will go really well together. Okay, so basically you've planted a plant in front of the other that has identical needs. Yes. So it's not like this needs water and that doesn't. Exactly, so, they go perfect together. All right, but I'm sensing that we've got a bit of work to do still. <laughs> yeah, so they, these will still send off offshoots and you've got a little bit of time to wait before it will come back and look really good. So what do you want me to do with this for the next month or so to help in the rehab? So during these warmer months it does need quite a bit of water okay. um, to get it going and then it should should come back looking really good. All right so I will get you to write me out a script, Okay. hand it over to the owners, they can keep the upkeep going and then we'll check in with you and let you know how we've gone. Sounds good. Thanks so much Chloe. Thank you.